everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this beautiful lingonberry button cowl. This is a really fun cowl to work up, and it's great for the very coldest days of winter. I have a lot of texture on here that I've created using post stitches, both front post double crochets and back post double crochets, and it's essentially created this woven texture. And I also added some really pretty stripes. So you can see on here that when the colors transition from one color to the next in all these beautiful shades of purple, uh, you can really see the stitches that really shows off the stitches. And um, again, I've used shades of purple. So this more muted purple, this brighter, more fuchsia color, and this really dark purple as well. And to keep the cow closed, I've added a lovely little wooden button to the bottom. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a 10 millimeter P crochet hook. You'll need a ruler or a tape measure. Um, it's, it's optional just to help you measure as you go along. You'll need a large button. Now I'm gonna be using a button that's one and a half inches wide. You wanna make sure it's fairly big because you'll want it to accommodate this very bulky, uh, thick piece that we're gonna be making. So you'll wanna make sure that it can pass through. You'll do a little test uh, just to slip it through. We're gonna be using the spaces in between these stitches as buttonholes. So you wanna make sure that it passes through. If your button is too small, on the other hand, uh, it can fall through and not really be effective to hold the piece together while you wear it. You'll also need a tapestry needle, and you'll want one that's pretty big to accommodate the super bulky yarn, and also a pair of scissors. The yarn that we're going to be using is um, super bulky yarn, and I use 2.5 balls of Wool Ease Thick and Quick. Now I use three different colors for mine, and you can see with these particular post stitches that we're gonna be doing, uh, it really shows off the stitches when you use multiple colors. If you only want to use two colors, that's fine. If you want to make it solid colors, that's fine as well. But I'm going to be using um, super bulky yarn, so if you want to substitute, just look for um, the six on the back of the yarn label on the yarn weight scale, the super bulky six. Now for the finished piece over here, I used one ball of raspberry, this color here, one ball of fig, and a half a ball of the eggplant. It's a very dark purple. So kind of tones of the purple family for this one. For the uh, project that we'll be making today together, I picked some winter shades. So this color here is called Glacier. I'm gonna use a ball of that and a ball of barley. That is one of the, um, the tweeds. And then for the half ball, I'll be using, this is called Fisherman, and I happen to have a little bit left over from another project, so it worked out perfectly. So we're gonna be using kind of these wintry shades for the one we'll be making today. Our finished cowl has a width of 14 inches wide and a length of about 28 inches long. However, there's no special stitch count for this cowl. Uh, you can make it as wide as you'd like it to be, and you can make it as long as you'd like it to be simply by working more rows of the pattern. Okay, so I wanted to point out before we get started that uh, for the color sequence of this, we're going to be repeating uh, two rows over and over and over to get this kind of woven look with the post stitches. But for the colors themselves, I did uh, two rows of the eggplant six rows of the fig and six rows of the raspberry. And then I just went ahead and repeated that over and over for the colors. Uh, so what we can do with these three colors is um, do six rows of one color, six rows of another color, and two rows of another color. Now, depending on what you have on hand, because this is such a great kind of stash busting project, uh, if you need to switch up the uh, number of rows you're doing based on the amount of yarn you have, definitely feel free to do that. But, um, you know, just if you're wondering about this particular sequence. And I will say that if you use more than one color, it really does look very neat and kind of stitchy when uh, the colors change. So it is a really fun pattern to play around with colors. Okay, so I'm going to start with this barley yarn partly because I love this yarn. It's so pretty and 
uh, nice for winter, but also it shows up nicely too, so you can see all the stitches happening. So what we're going to do is put a slip knot on our hook to begin. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop, and tighten. Now our cowl has a starting chain of 30. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, and thirty. I wanted to point out some of you ask me um, frequently about your starting chain, that it's too tight, that you make your starting chain too tight. If you are having a problem with this, go up a hook size for the starting chain only and then switch back to this uh, 10 millimeter P hook for the remainder of your project and that helps a lot if you need to do that. If your chain is too tight it can kind of draw in the bottom of your project a little bit. Okay so for row one what we're going to do is count the third chain in. Now this loop here does not count so we're going to count one, two, three. So in the third chain from the hook we're going to work a double crochet. To make a double crochet wrap yarn around hook Insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Now, I wanted to point out as a side note, when you use some of the Tweedy yarn, you might get some uh, little pieces that are unique to the Tweed. So that's okay, you might just get a little shedding and have to uh, dust off once in a while. So we did a double crochet in the third chain from the hook. Now we're going to work a double crochet in each chain all the way across. So work a double crochet in the next chain, double crochet in the next chain, all the way across to the very end. And this is going to kind of set the stage for the next two rows where we will be working our post stitches and creating all that really thick, wonderful texture. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work my double crochets all the way across, and then in, in just a moment we'll rejoin. Okay, so I'm just working the last double crochet into that last chain of our row here. Okay, so row one will look like this. And now we're ready to move on to row two. Now I mentioned before, see this was where I started. So this is two rows of our first color and then six rows and so forth. So we're going to work one more row of this barley before switching colors and I'm going to show you how to switch colors as well. Okay, so let's move on to row two of our pattern. So chain three, one, two, three and turn our work. Now we're going to be working post stitches for the remainder of our pattern. So this first post, not this one here, but this first post that you come to after you've made your chain and turned we're going to work a front post double crochet in this, this first one that we come to right here, okay? So what we're going to do, it's worked very, if you're not familiar with this stitch, let me get a little bit of yarn to get us going here. If you're not familiar with this stitch, I have a separate tutorial on both the front post double crochet and also later we're going to do a back post double crochet if you want to practice a little bit before you master the stitch and apply it to this project but it's very similar as a regular double crochet which we just did. So what you're going to do is simply wrap yarn around hook and what you're going to do is instead of going into the stitch at the top we're going to come up under the post. The post is kind of the column of the stitch, okay? So your stitch will have this column and then this like little loop at the top. So previously we worked into the stitch but we're going to come up under the column like that Wrap yarn around hook and bring it back through the way you came. So bring it back under there, just like that, and you'll have three loops on your hook. Now wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the first two loops on your hook, and wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the last two loops of your hook. That is the front post double crochet. And see how it creates this like long continuous column? And it also, if we look at it on the side, gives a little bit of dimension. It's a little less flat than regular double crochet stitches. 
Okay, so work a front post double crochet into that first double crochet you come to. Then we're gonna work a back post double crochet. We're gonna be alternating these two stitches. Okay, so for the back post double crochet, wrap yarn around hook. Now, you're gonna do the opposite. So locate that next post, and that's right here. Now come from, we wrapped yarn around hook, now come from the back and go over top of it, over top of that post and back down, just like that. Wrap yarn around hook and bring it back the way you came with your hook and bring it up, bring that loop up. You have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. That is the back post double crochet. And when we look at this a little more closely, because it's the reverse basically of the front post, we have this long column from our front post double crochet, and then we have this ridge that the back post double crochet creates. So if we were to flip it over, our back post double crochet now looks like the front post on the other side. Which, the reason I'm explaining all this is because when you wear your cowl, it makes it a very reversible piece. It looks exactly the same on both sides, which is really nice when you uh, are wearing a piece where you're going to be uh, potentially folding it aside or flipping it uh, down like a collar or something. It's nice that it looks the same on both sides. Okay, so moving right along, we're going to next work a front post double crochet. So I'm going to show you again, but a little quicker this time. Wrap yarn around hook, come up under the post. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through. Yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops on the hook. Okay, so we're just gonna continue all the way across. So now we just worked our front post double crochet, we're ready to work the back post double crochet. Okay, so we'll work our front post double crochet and our back post double crochet. So back post again is yarn around hook, come up from the back, go over top of the post, back down, wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay, let's look at what we have so far. We have a lot of nice texture happening and once we start to put more rows in, it'll really get that woven effect that we're after. Okay, so I'm gonna continue across working my front post double crochets and back post double crochets all the way across. And then once we get towards the end, we'll rejoin. Okay, so I'm just working that last stitch and mine happens to be a front post double crochet. So I'm just gonna work that front post double crochet. And then we also have our turning chain. Now, when you work these post stitches, like this, sometimes your turning chain can kind of get folded over to the back, it kind of pushes it out of the way. That's okay, just kind of flip it over to the front, sort of flatten it out. And then what we're gonna do in this topmost chain, you might have to feel for it a little bit with this bulky yarn, we're going to work just a regular double crochet in that topmost chain. So go ahead and work a double crochet, just like that. And then our row two is complete. So it'll look kind of like that. And then what you can do is just cut the yarn and we'll go ahead and fasten off. And basically that's how you make the cow. We're just going to repeat row two over and over and over again, but I wanna show you how to switch colors. I already grabbed the Glacier uh, yarn, this really pretty light blue color. So. Again, we're just gonna be repeating row two over and over and over and switching colors. So we're gonna do uh, whatever colors you choose, two rows of color A, six rows of color B, six rows of color C, okay? So what you wanna do is insert your hook into that last stitch worked and kind of hook the new yarn on there and bring it through, getting this tail out of the way here. Okay, and then we're just gonna tie it right on. Now, there's lots and lots of ways to join your yarn. This is the way I like to do it. It's quick and easy. Uh, if you have a way that you prefer to do it, please feel free to do that. Um, definitely do what feels comfortable and what you enjoy doing the most, okay? So we're gonna get these tails out of the way. Now, if you wanna weave some of these in as you go along, just kind of hold this tail along the edge as you work your stitches and that will weave that in as you go along or you can weave them in at the end, and I'm gonna show you how to do that as well in just a minute. 
So insert your hook back into that same stitch, bring up a loop, and now you're ready to continue. So again, we're just repeating row two over and over again. And what we're gonna do is chain three. One, two, three. I won't show you the entire row again. You can just kind of back up and rewatch it if you need to. But we're gonna turn our work, and now we're at our first stitch. So you can see what, uh, what we did back here was a front post double crochet, but when you flip it, it looks like a back post double crochet on the side. So it's gonna give you that woven effect of kind of the reverse looks uh, working together. So this is really where, in this pattern, where the magic happens because the colors, when they interact with these, this particular stitch, uh, looks very, very interesting when they kind of uh, meet together in the middle. Okay, so once again, work a front post double crochet and then you'll work a back post double crochet. And you're just gonna repeat the sequence all the way across, okay? If you're not familiar, once again, with the post stitches, uh, this is a great pattern to practice. It'll give you lots and lots of practice. Okay, so we're just doing the front post double crochet and this was the back post double crochet just alternating them over and over again. Let me just show you some of our handiwork. See how you can really see, like when you're doing one color, you, you don't see it as much, you do see the texture, but you really see how the stitches kind of sort of hook onto one another. Okay, so just work this all the way across, changing colors, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the other uh, piece because it's just about finished. I just have a stitch or two left. So we're gonna finish that one up together, and then I'll show you how to do the finish work, weave in the ends, and sew on the button. Okay, I went ahead and grabbed the other one that's more or less finished except for a few little things, and because uh, I really wanted to also kind of roll this out for you and show you how these colors work together with these stitches, how they just kind of transition into one another. So I'm on the very last stitch and I just wanted to work this last stitch and we're gonna finish this off. So once again, in that top turning chain, just work your double crochet stitch. And then I just have a little tiny bit of yarn, as you can see, and we're just gonna cut that yarn and fasten off. Now, if you were very diligent and wove your ends in as you went along, you're gonna have a lot less work than me, but I have all these ends that I have to weave in. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to weave in every single end on this video, because once you have seen one end, you'll know how to do the rest of them, but I do wanna point out something important about weaving in ends on your striped projects. So what you want to do is grab your tapestry needle and like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you want to make sure it's a large one to accommodate this bulky yarn. Give the yarn a little bit of a twist to help send it through the eye of the needle and thread. Now you'll want to make sure when you weave your ends in that this is the raspberry. You want to make sure that the raspberry tail is only woven into the raspberry section. Otherwise it's going to look like this light purple line going through your work, okay? So go ahead and go in this direction, go across here, like this, bring it through, and definitely take your time on your finished work. You just spent all this time making this lovely project and you don't wanna rush through this part. This is a important part to you know really get the finished work nice and neat. Now just come back in the other direction and that'll help lock the tail into place. Just bring it all the way through and then grab your scissors and just trim. Now you'll want to repeat that for the rest of your tails depending on how many tails that you have. Obviously I have a ton of work to do but you know go ahead and weave your tails in. We're going to move into uh, the button section of uh, this tutorial and then our project will be complete. Okay, so I went ahead and woven all those ends that you saw a few minutes ago, and now we're ready to sew the button. Now, the way the cowl is wrapped at the photo at the beginning of this video, um, we're gonna sew the button to the bottom left corner. And this is this was our starting edge. So this is where we began. And 
So just on the left side, so right there at the corner is where you'll want to sew your button. Now, before you sew it on, I would encourage you to put the cow on and kind of wrap it up and wrap it around and see if there's maybe an alternative way you'd like to wear it. Or if you'd like to add more buttons, maybe a row across the bottom. Um, but I'm going to sew one in this bottom left corner and that'll allow me to wrap it sort of. I really like asymmetrical uh, cow button cow wraps. So I like to just do one kind of statement button. But you could do a row of buttons because these spaces in between all of these post stitches that we do are going to double up as our buttonholes down at the other end. Okay? So go ahead and lay the button where you'd like it to go. Now I wouldn't put it too close to the edge. You want it to come in a little bit. And I went ahead and grabbed a matching piece of yarn because we're going to be sewing it more or less onto the eggplant section. It's kind of on the line there. but. So go ahead and thread your tapestry. Whoops, go ahead and thread your tapestry needle. Just with a little tail. And then holding your button with your other hand, just come up from the bottom. Now this is again a very bulky cow. So you're gonna have to go through a fairly thick section and maybe wiggle it around a little bit to get it through. Okay, and then just leave a little bit of a tail on the other side. Just don't pull it through all the way. Now come back down, and again, you might have to kind of shimmy it through a little bit. And then just do that a couple of times. Once or, or twice or three times would be fine. Any more than that, it's probably going to be, see it's already getting a little bit bulky to kind of go through any more than that. Okay, so this will be sufficient. Okay, so once you've gone through it a few times, and you can see how pretty the matching yarn looks with uh, the button. So it's like the same yarn, it looks very pretty. Okay, so just go ahead and flip it over and you can remove your needle at this point. And go ahead and just tie it off. Tie, tie a couple of knots. I like to do at least three, but any more than that, the knot is gonna look really bumpy, okay? So then what you can do is weave those in ends in as well, doing the same thing that we did when we wove our ends in on the project earlier. Okay, so just go in one direction, come back in the other direction. Now you can simply, because this is the back technically, even though this fabric that we've created with our crochet is reversible, uh, the, this is um, technically the back because it's the back of your button. Uh, you could cut those flush, but I really feel like when you weave it in, it, it finishes off nicely, but it also locks everything down nice and secure. You don't have to worry about anything popping out. Okay, so do the same exact thing, come in one direction, and then come back, Just wiggle it a little bit if it's very bulky, come back in the other direction. Okay, and then just trim. And our cowl, let me just get these scraps out of the way, our cowl is complete. We have our beautiful button, and now we can kind of just uh, wrap it. I like to flip mine down like a collar, and then just sort of button it into place. And if you check out the Fiberflux blog, there will be more ways also to style your cowl. Okay, so that is how you crochet the Lingonberry Button Cow. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again. Yeah.